Hi everyone, welcome back to another one of Fletcher's Reviews, and in today's episode, he's going to review Hit the Road by Martin Wallace. That's right. Now, Fletcher, we have a question that we need to address. Um, how come you haven't done a review in such a long time? Why has it been so long since your last review? Oh yeah, sure, there have been a lot of changes around here since your new sister Lily showed up. Lots of puppy, potty, and crate training. Yep. What's that? No, don't, don't worry, buddy. You're always going to be my first and my best pal. Say, I wonder if Lily will want to do her own board game reviews in the future. Hey, hey, no need to get nasty there, Fletcher. Now let's just get you reviewing Hit the Road, a light, medium, one to four player, 30 to 60 minute post-apocalyptic survival game by Martin Wallace. So, what did you think of this one? No question, the theme is awesome. It's what initially attracted us to this game. A small group of survivors are trying to brave all the undead and human dangers to make it across the country from Chicago to Los Angeles to that safe haven. Now like you, I love that the cards in this game tell a story in pictures that is similar to yet different from your standard zombie apocalypse tropes. And the art is uniformly professional, highly thematic, and evocative, right? What's that? Wait, don't lick me. Yeah, okay, okay. I know you're wondering if the included solo game is as fun and worthwhile as the multiplayer game, with its intense auction bidding mechanic uh, for players to select their desired cards that dictate their path and destiny on the road to LA. Now, while that auction bidding mechanic is absent from the solo game, the good news is that the solo game features some excellent design on the part of Mr. Wallace to keep the choices deliciously agonizing and the excitement pumping. What's that? Yep, right you are, chum. On each of the eight turns in the solo game, you set out three pairs of cards in the play area. Each pair represents two possible segments on the next leg of your journey, each with potential for greater risk, like a walker attack, but also for great reward. The brilliance of Wallace's design is on how the cards are laid out and the choices they confront the player with. So the top pair of cards are both face down, meaning the entire path, the risks, the rewards are completely unknown. But uh, the upside is if you choose that option, you get two bonus resources for making that choice. Now the middle pair of cards, the first part is face up, and then the second card is face down. So half of the path is known, and with no resource bonus or penalty for choosing that path. The bottom pair of the cards are both face up, all information on that path is revealed, but the downside is you have to uh, give up two resources to be able to choose that known path. So there's a surprisingly satisfying amount of player choice and risk reward calculation within these seemingly simple card placements. Uh-huh. Yep, good point. There, things really get exciting when a zombie attack lies on your chosen path. Now combat plays out in two phases, an optional ranged attack phase, which is safer, but uses up your team's precious bullets, and a melee phase, which conserves resources, but carries a greater risk of one or more of your team getting bitten and killed by walkers. So combat is resolved by rolling dice with custom faces, as you know, but there are some nice rules that mitigate the randomness. Some items can also be acquired that can help or hurt your chances in combat. So I think you will agree that this game features a veteran game designer's finely honed sense of balance between randomness and determinism. What's that? Yeah, uh-huh. Agreed, this game has quite a few tokens, boards, and cards, and they are all equally of high production quality. This is a small box game that features quite a bit of stuff, looks good on the table, and feels good in hand. Uh, sorry, paw. Uh, and the one nitpick we have with the solo game is that it requires far fewer of the game components than the multiplayer game does. However, we did manage to find a use for that auction bidding board that normally you can only use in multiplayer uh, as a round tracker uh, as we progress through the eight rounds of play in the solo game. So, Fletcher, what is your bottom line on this game? Yup. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. Hits the Road as a solo game features some satisfyingly tough decisions, but not too tough. 
some nicely balanced dice-driven combat, but not too random, and some attractive components in a small box game that neatly fills the space between filler game and main course. Yeah, me neither, boy. I have rarely had a better time playing in the end of the world. All right, so that is uh, Fletcher's review of Hit the Road by Martin Wallace. And that's all for us for right now. Till next time, we'll see you next time on The Cut.